I honestly think that the new technology that we have for layout is actually a bigger change to CSS, and it's a bigger change to graphic design on the web than responsive web design was, which is a bold statement to make, I know, but I, I hope that we're going to use these tools, and I know that once we fully use them and fully understand them, it's gonna, we're going to look back 20 years from now and see this transition as a bigger transition than anything we've had before, or at least anything we've had since we switched from tables to CSS. When I first started doing graphic design, I was trained in this technique called paste up. It was the late 80s. I worked in a little print shop. The folks in the print shop, Sue was my manager for the summer, and she taught me all these techniques for doing paste up, where we would use the bar on the drafting table to line things up and to keep things super straight. And we had pencils that we would use, and we had no-show blue pencils, and she would go use the photo typesetting machine and print out these long strips of text that were basically this rudimentary kind of 1960s style computer where she would type in the text, and it would print it, the text out on photo paper, like a photograph of the letters, because it was much more beautiful and it was super crisp. It was the kind of the only way to get super crisp text. And we'd take that text and we'd send it through a wax machine and cut it apart and use the drafting table to like line everything up and you had to measure everything. And that whole era of paste up, that kind of technology really came about in the 1920s, back when photography was new. There was this magazine called Vu Magazine in Paris Paris, where they used new techniques that they were inventing and that others had just invented to use film and photography as an integral part of the printing process. And they were asking themselves and each other questions about what does it mean to make a magazine? What does it mean to print text when you can do the layout in any fashion you want? If you want to put text crooked, you can because you're just gluing it to a piece of paper. Um, like the techniques I learned later, you just take wax, you know, if you weren't careful, it would end up being crooked. But if you wanted it to be crooked, you could just turn it. Super easy. You just took the exacto knife and shifted it. Um, if you wanted things to line up, you lined them up. If you didn't want them to line up, you just, you could do anything you wanted because all of it was a collage. All of it was floating freely on the page. You kind of place anything anywhere you want it on the magazine page. It led them to ask questions about what does it make, mean to make a magazine that's so heavily visual, that has so many photographs, that is in fact a montage. It was their goal to create a magazine, a news magazine that mimicked or that was a print way of doing the newsreels that were being created. People were starting to go to the movies and they go to the movies to get their news and they would watch these whatever five minute, 10 minute newsreels about the latest news before the feature film. Vu magazine wanted to be that kind of news magazine. They wanted to make a break from the past and not really be anything like a newspaper, but be much more like a film. What the big change was, like before paste up, before this freedom to put anything on the page any place you wanted, everything was being printed by using metal type. Hand setting metal type. After hand set type and before paste up came the linotype machine which I find really fascinating, where this kind of very complicated, designed by a watchmaker, complex, physical, metal, loud machine would squirt out metal into the mold and create lines of type one at a time in metal. That was a much faster way to typeset copy than to hand place each and every letter. And you can look at the evolution of printing technology using metal type from when it first started in Korea in the 1200s to when it kind of went out of fashion completely in the mid to late 20th century. So that shift from metal type to photo-based layout opened everything up. And I think that that's what's happening to us right now. There's something about floats and about locking everything into boxes. That's the world that we've been stuck in in the first 15 years of using CSS on the web. There really wasn't a lot of freedom. And now with CSS Grid especially, but also with all the different pieces that we have, the whole toolkit that we have, there's a freedom and a way in which we can place things anywhere. And we can study what happened when we went from books where the type was just set in a column, or magazines or newspapers where the type was just set in a column, the kind of Victorian layouts that were very rigid and very set and not a lot of freedom, 
And what happened in magazines and everything once photo typesetting came along, like the explosion that happened, I think we can study that transition and we can see what kind of new creative possibilities, what kind of new communication possibilities happened. And we can take inspiration from that and we can translate some of those ideas onto the web and we can help make that kind of a revolution happen on the web where the web ends up being really different, where we understand our medium differently, where we can communicate a story, where we can put a news article, a newspaper article, or some kind of blog post, a magazine article on the web and really shape the way that it gets presented. We can take application interfaces and tools that we're providing our users for them to be able to do anything from book an airline ticket to edit a photo to share a word processing document. And we can think about new ways to present that content, new ways to present those interfaces, new ways to do those layouts to better empower people to do what it is that they're trying to do. I think we should really think big and be willing to take daring, bold chances. At some point, somebody, some of us need to take some time and think about our medium and think about what this transition means and think about um, how storytelling is, is different because of the technological underpinnings that have changed with the new CSS and the new layout that we have.